On this week's boiler tip, we're gonna talk about gas leaks. Uh, when we spend a lot of time in a boiler room, you know, there's a lot of smells, chemical smells, metal smells, stuff like that. But um, sometimes we'll, we'll suspect that we smell gas or somebody will come in and, and say that they smell gas and we, we certainly don't want to ignore that. And one of the tools that we've got to uh, check for gas leaks are just electronic gas detectors. First important detail with these is that if you if you have one make sure to read and follow the instructions. Uh, in general we want to calibrate these and power them up outdoors so that we're not calibrating them in a potentially gas rich environment. Um, and, and what this does is it just detects the gas through a cell on the end of its lead. Because natural gas rises, um, if I'm gonna check this gas train, I'm typically gonna sweep above the gas train. And I wanna take my time and start off above any threaded fittings. And what I'm looking for is an acceleration in the beep or if you've got a meter that has a numerical readout, um, et cetera, it'll pick it up. It is important to keep in mind, this unit's not firing and we've got a safety shutoff valve here. So I don't have pressure forward of that in the gas train. So that portion will have to be checked once we're firing because that valve will be open. We don't wanna forget the pilot line. Oh, and here we are. It looks like we've got a leak in this vicinity. And this is where the, the sweep detecting gets a little less useful because while it can pick up a gas leak at very sensitive levels, um, it's not always as good at zeroing in on that leak location. So a better tool for that is really soap. Um, this isn't soap per se, it's a bona fide gas leak detector, but it works a lot like soap bubbles. So if we spray the gas train in the vicinity of where we've got the leak detected, we can soap all those fittings and connections and we want to give it a nice coating. And that's really the reason that uh, we like to start with the sweeper so that we don't have to soap everything if we don't need to. So we can check that and yeah, I've got gas bubbles coming out of a pilot fitting here. Um, so I can tighten that and then I'll check it again. Another spot where we'll sometimes get gas leaks on a fuel train um, is from the gas valve actuator stem. Um, it's kind of common sense that if we're checking for leaks, we're gonna check the threaded connections on the gas valve where the piping goes in and comes out. But we could also have a leak inside the valve uh, around the actuator stem. So the issue with having a leak here is that it's not gonna be readily detectable with a soap spray method because if the actuator's on there, there's a wide area that it could come out and no place that's gonna really hold pressure to develop bubbles. So our tip on these is to use a portable detector and sniff the windows of the actuator because if we've got a gas leak, um, it's gonna come out at the edges of that view window and we can also check at the base where it couples together. So if I get gas detected there, I can pull the actuator off and, and verify with the sniffer inside and I'm probably gonna have to replace the gas valve. Another spot on the gas train where we may wanna think about having problems in gas coming out is actually if we've got a pinhole or a tear in the diaphragm of our regulator. Uh, our regulator has a diaphragm that has to move freely and so it is it does have a vent connection, but that vent connection is typically piped outside because if we get a hole in the diaphragm, we want to be able to detect it. So if we remove the cap from the regulator or we actually detach the vent from the regulator, we can use a sniffer 
at that location and if it chimes up or perks up, that's gonna tell us that uh, maybe we've got a leak in that diaphragm. And that is gonna affect the functionality of the regulator over time, so we're gonna wanna have that looked at and replaced. So we've looked at potential leaks in the gas train to atmosphere, but it's also critical that our gas train doesn't leak into the boiler. And, and what that means is that we need to verify that our safety shutoff valves hold correctly. And one method that we can use to do that is to use a, a pressure sensor um, downstream of our safety shutoff valve. So in this case, I've just got one valve and that makes it a lot easier. If you've got multiple valves, um, you may wanna have a, a service technician look at this for you. But basically, if I close a manual valve on the outlet of my safety shutoff valve, if my safety shutoff valve holds, we should see no increase in pressure on my sensor. So if we look at our live reading, we've got basically zero pressure on that space between the two valves right now. And that's going to ensure and verify that we're not bleeding through. On older style gas trains, we don't really have any choice but to manually pressure test those gas valves for leaks. And usually it's recommended that that be done annually. But on systems like AutoFlame um, and more advanced controls, we have systems that can actually prove uh, that our valves hold automatically before each cycle. And we can watch it go through that sequence. First it's allowing the sensor to zero, then by closing the vent valve, it's looking for an increase in pressure that's going to indicate that our first gas valve's bleeding through. So it's going to monitor that for a fixed duration. Once we pass that test, it's going to energize the first valve, which will pressurize the space between the vent valve and the second safety shutoff valve. When that valve's de-energized, now it will look for pressure loss, which would indicate that our vent valve or second safety shutoff valve is bleeding through. Since it's not seeing a change in that status, it's gonna go ahead and vent that pressure and it's gonna proceed with the light off sequence. So the benefit of that sequence is that it happens automatically and it happens every time the boiler cycles instead of once a year.